In this video, I'd like to show you how to adjust a car seat and steering and to have, say, a complete picture of it. We're going to first deal with this car, which is, say, a normal sedan car, a Toyota Camry in this case. And then we're going to take care of a car that has only two adjustment possibilities, which is my uh, Honda S2000. I will also show you how to get into the car without breaking your back. Let's first look at the mistakes that many people do. Well, the biggest mistake I would say that many people do is this, you know, the, the backrest is, is so much backwards that basically three things happen. Thing number one, that's not me saying it, that the car manufacturers, the seat belt will be less effective. Thing number two is, as your spine is inclined this way, well, your line of sight is actually going upwards. And if you want to look at the, the road, well, you'll have to go forward with your head. And this is a source of neck strain, which is a violation of what we have called rule number two in the video on the three rules of posture. The third issue with this driving position is a further violation of rule number two. Is you see, when I'm here, my arms are actually behind me, yeah? So if I want to reach my steering, I have to go all the way there, yeah? And this stretching my arms is constant strain on my neck, and it actually makes me also slower. So how do we adjust a car seat? Well, I would say there are a few steps. The first uh, adjustment is the adjustment of the height of the seat. And that has to do with the um, angle of your hip. You see, if you sit too low, your angle, your hip will, hip joint will be very closed and that will be uncomfortable. Hence, you will tend to slouch. So the thing is, we should try to sit as high as the car allows us to, on such a car at least, if you drive an SUV, well, that's as high as you can, provided that your feet are on the ground. So to make sure in this car that I sit as high as possible, well, I will make sure that I get, can get out of the car without killing my head on the door frame. So you see, here I have, say, a few centimeters of margin, and I make sure that I have even more margin with respect to the ceiling in case of an accident. Then you will adjust the front back position of the seat. Here there's again a double effect. You see that the closer I go to the pedals, the, the more closed is my hip joint. On the other hand, if I'm too far from the pedals, I will slide in the seat because I try to reach the pedals. Yeah? So what you want is to have um, your, your, your pedals right under your toes without feeling that your hip is starting to close. Now I feel that the hip joint is starting to get closed, so I reopen it. Okay, that's step two. Step number three is I will play with the angle of the seat pan. The idea of the angle of the seat pan is that, you know, when I drive, my thighs are going to get lazy, and I'm going to go like this, you know, with my knee outwards. And if my knee goes outwards, well, again, I will slouch. So what's the idea? The idea is when I'm on the pedals, I make sure that the seat pan is not closing my hip joint, but that, that it's just supporting my thighs. So here I start to feel a little bit of pressure. So that's the right seat pan angle. And now the important trick is angle of the backrest. I remove the backrest, you see, I put it super far away. And the way I will adjust it is the following. I will slouch, and to diagnose that I slouch, I will put my hand in my lower back. When my hand is in my lower back, I can feel that the vertebrae are popping out. So I will make them disappear. You see if here my back is flat, yeah? I don't feel the vertebrae anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the backrest towards my back, until I feel that my pelvis is supported. Here. Now I feel that my pelvis is supported. So actually, when I sit back and I just relax, my pelvis doesn't move anymore. I don't slouch. Okay? Of course, you can also adjust, it's here, the, the pressure of the lumbar support so that you feel more or less, say, support in your belt. The important is that you feel support, but that you don't feel that your back wants to get hollow. And what's the last step? 
Well, the last step is to set the steering. Yeah, the steering can be set in depth or it can be set in height. The height will be adjusted more with regard to visual indicators, i.e. you want to be able to see all the controls on the dashboard. Regarding this, the depth of the steering, well, you don't want it to be sheer, otherwise not only is it not comfortable, but it's also a safety hazard. But you don't want it to be sheer either, for the reasons that we already mentioned, which are violation of rule number two. So what's in the middle? Well, what's in the middle is when the steering is right under your wrist, when the elbow is gently flexed. So I'm going to bring it back, you see, here, here it's just under my, uh, my wrist, and then I'm going to adjust the height as low as I can, provided that I can see everything which is relevant on the dashboard. And here we go. Okay, by the way, headrest. What you want to do is make sure that the point of the headrest, which is the most forward, is at the height of the point of your head, which is the most backwards. So that basically, in case of a shock, the distance is minimum, and you don't have, say, uh, or your neck will not extend and break your, your your cervical spine. So you want it to be yeah, more or less like this, you see? This point of the headrest is at the height of that point of my head, so that if there's a shock, check, I go here, but I'm safe. And then, of course, you adjust your mirrors, so that with minimum neck movement, you see the controls well. So this is the basic adjustment. Now, depending on what you feel when driving, you will do micro adjustments. One typical micro adjustment is if I feel that I that I'm not stable in the seat. Well, typically I will make it slightly lower because by making it slightly lower, I will increase the the pressure of my feet on the ground, and that will help pushing me further in the seat. Okay. Um, other adjustments can be, well, I feel actually I'm too tight or I feel that the, the headrest is against my head, so I will want to reopen a bit the, the backrest. But we are here talking about micro adjustments. What we did now are the macro adjustments. When you have a super adjustable car, it's very nice because you can really, really make it comfortable. But as always, it's always the same, you know, the more controls you have, the bigger the probability that the adjustment will be wrong. <laughs> okay, so let's now go to the other extreme, which is the S2000, and let's see at what you can do when you have only two adjustments. As you can see, the S2000 is a totally different type of car. I mean, as it's a sports car, you want to reduce the amount of weight um, from the, say, the options and the and every yeah, accessory, uh, and therefore, there are barely any seat adjustments. You only have to depth and angle of the backrest. So let's see what impact it has. Plus, this one is, of course, uh, a manual uh, gearbox. Seat depth. Same story. If I'm too far away, I will glide into the seat. If I'm too close, I will feel that my hip joint is starting to bend and that creates a lot of pressure in my hip joint. So what's in the middle? Well, this is what I find, say, comfortable in terms of hip joint, and then I need to make sure that I can press the clutch halfway, because on a car like this, you don't need to press it all the way down to shift the gears. Now, for me, this would not be enough, you see? I need to really extend the knee, and still I'm not halfway through the, through the pedal. So I will bring it a bit closer, like this, yeah? And then the backrest story is a bit the same, is I slouch, and here I try to um, find support of the backrest, which is now the case, yeah? As it's a sports car, there's, there's less space behind my shoulder blades, but you see that there's a lot of space actually behind my neck, especially as this is a bit too close for me, I feel actually more comfortable when I'm one more forward. So here there's quite some space behind my head. The logic of that is that normally this type of car, when you drive it on a track, you drive it with a helmet. And you see, the helmet has a certain, a certain thickness, and if there would not be that much space, 
while I would be with the head pushed forward when I drive on track. That's, yeah, in normal daily life when you don't drive with your helmet, it's, it's a bit, uh, say, it creates a risk. So basically, the final driving position will be kind of the same. On this one, you cannot even adjust the steering, eh? nothing. So the only thing you can do is adjust the depth to the clutch and adjust the backrest to your spine. As the risk of developing musculoskeletal disorders is what you do in which posture for how long in which psychological state, well, in this case, we can only play with posture and duration. We have optimized posture as well as we could, so the next factor that we can adjust is duration, meaning that this car is not meant to be driven for long hours on the motorway. That's not the goal. Now, you see that this car is super low, and the risk is that you break your back when you get in it. Why would you break your back? Well, because most people, maybe you even, go in the car with the leg first, and the body is meant to always be in balance. So if you go with something forward, something else needs to go backwards. If I go with my leg forward, something else needs to go backwards so that I stay in balance, you see? And that would be my back. But my back is not meant for that, you know? It cannot extend backwards very far. So I'm going to damage my back and my hip joint by going forward into this car. So I need to reverse the logic, and to reverse the logic, I need to go backwards into the car. I'm going to bend forward and kick back. See, if I kick back like this, I can put my right leg into the car, sit down, and then I'm going to make it more than it is necessary, but I'm going to shift my whole weight to the right so that I can bring my left leg inside. So I bring my whole weight, and here. of course this is exaggerated, but it's for you to see the thing. You see? And then I adjust my position. Now to get out of the car, idea is the same. I first will bring my left leg outside and now it's important that you go on a turn like this. What most people do, which is that, you see here your body would like to turn left and you create a torsion, you invert the movement and that is very heavy on your hip joint. All this is of course even more important when the car is parked in a narrow spot where you will take more awkward positions, like here, you know, I have to open the door and fit between the two cars. This will really suppose that I do the 180 degree turn.